Hey everyone, for, uh, for this week's video I wanted to do a very simple um, overlay, something that you sort of see here. And to set up an overlay like this, is, it can be pretty trivial, but to have a little bit more control over things in terms of being able to do uh, scaling and you know any type of transforms, we want to take things a little bit further, and that's what we're going to sort of look into today. And so the reason for me doing this video is, is sort of twofold. First of all, I think this technique is a really uh, clever, simple technique that kind of stands on its own. But it's also in, in response to a video that I did last week that had some errors in it that I'm going to address in this video here. So this, this video today is going to be a bit, bit of sort of two parts. I'm going to, you know, first part we're going to be looking at, you know, how this is done. Second part I'm going to go back and I'm going to sort of correct the errors from, uh, from, from my last video. And as much as I would like to take credit for this very elegant solution, I can't. This is actually from a user captive Lucille and he's the one that found a couple errors in my original video reached out to me and we've just sort of been working you know sort of behind the scenes together and um, I, I must give credit where credit is due and it is it is his idea that we're gonna see implemented here so thanks for that very much appreciated and so we're gonna get into building all this but but let's first take a look at sort of the final results and see what this this actually does so some of the power in this kinda comes from we have this little picture-in-picture -picture overlay here and we can come down to this transform control and we can kind of move, you know, sort of our clip underneath and we sort of keep our, our picture in picture sort of static. Um, we can do a bunch of scaling there as well. Uh, what I've also done is I've added this border here. There's a little black border and I've actually hooked that up to a mask down here and we're going to go through how to do this here. And I've added this border thickness control so we can kind of just take this and we can kind of you know, do whatever we want in terms of the thickness. So this is going to be our final product, but let's get right into it and let's start building. Okay, so here we are in a new fusion composition and I have a few different clips here. So these are media in nodes. This one here is the clip background. That's the one that you see here. And then I have the surfer overlay, which is what we're going to do for the little picture in picture overlay over here. And then of course our media out node over here. So this is the very simplest way that we might do things is just kind of grab a, let's merge these two together, bring this over to here to our media out node. Now I'll take media out. I'm going to bring it up here. And what we see right now is we see this is the one that's on top, uh, which means we have these two flipped around. So our background node is actually connected into our foreground node. So we can select our merge node, control T, and that flips things back and forth. So this again here is our media out. We can tell that by looking up here. But right now the clip is the entire size of the screen. So one thing we might do is pull this surfer overlay back and we might take a transform node. You'll find that right here. I'm going to drag that down holding the shift key down until I see this little line change colors into the blue and the green and then I'm going to release and that means I've kind of put it in line. So I could take this transform node here, I get it, let's say I wanted to reduce the size a little bit, okay, that sounds good, and sort of move it up here. So there we have a very simple overlay and that might work in some cases. And that's what I was saying, the sort of trivial overlay that we can do easily. Well that's something like this here. But what if we want to zoom in a little bit on this on the surfer here oh okay um well maybe we could make the size a little bit bigger here but now our whole overlay clip has gotten a little bit bigger so now we might want to start to crop perhaps so we can come in here to add a new tool under transform we can add crop i'll bring that in here okay we select our crop control we can start to pull back sizes like this and just starts to get ugly pretty fast so something like this might work in the very simplest of cases, but we want to do something that's a little bit more generic and a little bit more useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these two nodes here, and we're going to sort of start again here. So let's kind of just set up things a little bit so we can sort of fit stuff in between. So this merge, we're going to keep this merge, and this is going to be our final merge, merging these two clips together. And we're going to be adding a bunch of stuff on this green line here that's going to help define our overlay. So the technique that we're going to be using is we're going to be using a second merge node here. And the merge node is going to take three inputs. It's going to take this clip input here. It's going to take a background, and I'll get into that in a second. And it's also going to take a mask, and that mask is essentially going to define the, the overlay space. So let's start off by bringing in a second merge control and bring that right into here. And we're going to look at this merge control up top here. So now we're looking at what's called merge two. I just changed the name of that to Merge Overlay just to keep things a little bit more simple. And I've just renamed this Final Merge here as well, just to help differentiate. So any merge control is going to have three inputs that we really care about here. The green arrow is going to be the, the foreground, the yellow is going to be the background, and then we have this effects mask, mask here, and we're going to be using all three of those. 
But first, let's bring in a, a, essentially a background. So this background node, if I drag it up here, all it is right now is just this pure black background. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we want to hook it up to the background, which is this yellow node. But what I'm going to do, I'll just drag it into here. I'm going to drop it and it's going to go into the green node, which is sort of backwards because this is the foreground node. So again, I just select this merge, control T. So now up here we're, where we're looking at the merge overlay, we see our surfer, which is the foreground. We don't see the background because it's, it's completely hidden. Okay, so now we want to define our overlay, and to do that, we're going to be using a rectangle mask. And you can use any type of mask, but we're going to stick with a simple rectangle mask. I'm going to drag that down here. As soon as I put that on the screen, whatever node I have highlighted, the control is going to show up on both of these screens here. Um, so this really gives me a sense of where my mask is going to be. So that, that's good. So what, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this rectangle here and, uh, and hook it up to this node here. And this is the effects mask uh, input for, the, for, for our merge. And perfect, now we see, and again, we're looking at merge overlay, so that's this node here. Let me just go single single viewer. So we're looking at the merge overlay. So now we see in the foreground, our clip, we see the rectangle mask is defining this mask region here. And then the background, we have black. So if I bring up double viewers again, I'm gonna take this merge overlay, put it over to the left, and I'm gonna take our final merge and put it over here to the right. Now notice right now, this final merge looks the same as this merge here. So what we don't see is this background clip here. And the reason we don't see that background clip is because this black background, this node here, is kind of covering things up. So simple solution there, we come to this background node, we take the alpha, which is set at one, and we bring it down to zero. So that's sort of our transparency channel. So now we have this region here that we can use as our sort of window into our, our, our overlay. So the merge control does have some basic transforms sort of built in. If you look up here, we have a center, of 0 0.5, 0 0.5, that's represented by this control here. So I can take that and I can kind of move that around. So now we can see that that mask is acting as a window to that clip of the surfer. We can also do some scaling. I can take the size control and do some scaling. I can do some rotations. So I can do some basic transforms here. So that's one way to do it. You can do some transforms using this merge control, or you could put in an explicit transform node. I'm going, to do, I'm going to do that in a second, but first let me just come up here. I'm going to right click on center and I'm going to go set to default. And the size I set back to default as well. So then I can take this transform node here. I'm going to pull that down here and I renamed it to transform overlay. And now I can click on this transform node and I can do my actual transforms however I want sort of through here. Before I do that, let me just do an undo right now to set things back to the default for the transform overlay. Our mask, we want to move up sort of the top here. So this mask is defined by this rectangle here, which I named mask overlay. I'm going to pull it up to here, let's say. And that's all well and good, but now we see our surfer is sort of out of the picture here. And that's where we come down to our transform. And now we can take our transform, move the surfer up to where we want, and reduce the size a little bit so he fits in a little bit better. And this is starting to look good here. Now, something to keep in mind, if you look at my, tra I have my transform overlay selected here and I have this green rectangle, which is representing the entire clip of the surfer over here. So just something to keep in mind, as soon as I move this transform up too far, it's going to kind of break my, my mask in a sense. So I just want to be, I just want to make sure that I kind of keep my clip position so it sort of fits inside that, that mask. Okay, so now we have this set up. I want to put a little uh, background uh, on the back of this. And to do that, we're going to use another background node. And we're going to keep this one black. It's just going to be a black background. And we're going to want to bring another merge node into this section right here. So effectively, we're, we're going to merge this in the foreground with this in the background. And then we'll go through this final merge here, which will bring in this one over here. So we'll bring in our merge control, holding down shift, and we drop it in there. And we're going to drag our background on here, onto here, and that's going to kind of cover the whole thing up. So first thing we notice is we got to reverse our foreground and background again. So Control T, there we go. And now we see our background is certainly way too large. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to tie the size of this background to some of the stuff that we did over here. So first, let's just rename things, and we want to bring another mask in. So let's bring this mask down here, and we're going to tie this mask down into this border here. This background there we go and we can see it's starting to sort of take shape now we could take this and we can kind of manipulate things and sort of resize things get it a little wider or whatever let's be a little bit smarter about that we're going to tie this mask into this mask overlay here 
So the first thing we can do is just let's get the center sort of set. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to click on this mask overlay and I'm going to pin this over in my inspector here. So I have my mask overlay pinned. So when I select my mask background, my mask overlay is still seen down here and my mask background is seen up here. And what I want to do is I want to take the center of this. I want to take the center of my mask background. I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to go down to expression. That brings up this expression here. I don't really care about this expression. I'm going to overwrite it. So I'm just, let's just get rid of it here altogether. I'm going to take this little plus sign and I'm going to drag it down to the center over here. And I'm going to let go. And now it comes up as mask under overlay dot center, which is perfect. So now the centers are locked together. So if I take this mask over here and I move things, well, it's going to move the border as well. So I'll just do an undo, snap that back into place. Now we want to take care of the thickness. So same kind of idea. So we're still pinned with our mask overlay. I take my mask border. And we want the thickness to be controllable. But first, let's just get it set up to have it just a little bit bigger than the width and the height of our existing surfer mask here because we want it to be just a little bit larger in either dimension. So we can do kind of the same thing there. We come down here for width and height and we set some expressions and I'm going to tie this width down to the width. I'm going to tie the height down to the height. Now we can't see that border anymore because the width and the height are equal so it's sort of just hidden behind. But what we're going to do is we're going to just want to add a little bit extra here. So I can just do that manually just for now just to see what the effect is. I'm going to put point or 0.05 now watch what happens here. If I also put 0.05, this black border here is a little bit wider than this little black border here. And that's because this 0.05 is tied to the aspect ratio. So what we can do is, is add a multiplier here on the width to make this width a little bit thinner. And we want to multiply that by essentially the aspect ratio, which in my case, 1080 over 1920. And now they'll sort of snap into place. So that's all well and good, but we can add a little slider to this mask background here to make things a little bit easier to control instead of having to come in here if we want to do any modifications. So to do that, we come into this mask border, right click, edit controls. Over here, I'm going to put the name as border thickness. Now that sets up my ID with the same name as border thickness, but I want to come back to my name. I'm just going to put a space in there for readability. And I want to set up my range. Let's set up a default value of 0.0.03. Let's go with that. And I'm going to set a range of 0 to 0 0.1. I'm going, to, I'm going to choose a slider control here. So that's going to add essentially one of, one of these controls. And my default range is going to be 0 to 0.1, but I can also, if the user wants to override that, I'll let them go up to 0.5, let's say, which is pretty ridiculously thick, but that's okay. Okay, so I just print it, pressed enter and I did make a mistake there because I didn't change the page. So where that where that control was added is over here on this user tab here. So if I click on that user tab, I see this border thickness here. So that's all well and good, but I wanna change where that's, that's located. I wanna bring it back over here to the controls page. So what I can do is I can right click back here, go to edit controls. I have to find my control now on this dropdown, probably near the bottom somewhere. There we go, border thickness border thickness, all my stuff comes up here, but I want to choose my page down here. So I'm going to choose controls instead. I click on OK. So now we see under mask background, there's nothing that shows up on the user pane anymore. And we come to controls and down at the very bottom, there's this border thickness here. So now all we have to do is take this number that we put in here, this hard coded number, and we want to say border thickness. So this was the ID that we created. And I'm just going to press enter. And same thing with this here border thickness. So it's as simple as that. Now I have this slider that's tied to, to the border and I can do whatever I want with it. And I can bring it up to a value of point, uh, point 0.1. That's how far the slider goes. But if I wanted to put in a number up to point 0.5 in here, I can. We're going to leave it at that for now though. All right, quick note, I just updated the name of this here. I kind of have that named improperly before. In any case, so that's what I really wanted to show as far as the overlay is concerned. So we have a really nice system where we can take our mask overlay here and we can position it wherever we want. We can select our transform overlay here to move our clip underneath and we can size it and we can scale as we desire. We can come down to our mask border over here and we can play with the border thickness a little bit. So it's a pretty robust little system. If we wanted to change the color of that border, that's very simple. We can just come down here and pick whatever color that we like. And of course we can animate anything we want here. So if we wanted to do sort of a slow zoom, for example, in here, we could animate this size 
to do this sort of slow zoom in. That's all available. And because we've sort of defined our, our window, if you will, using this mask here, everything is kind of locked in within this region here that we've defined. Okay, so now I just wanted to go back to my old video and just do a small correction there. So if you haven't seen that old video, I'll link it right up above here. It's a pretty neat system that we built when we can click on this control over here, come over to this user control here. We can kind of slide all these bars around. We can do a whole bunch of really interesting animations. The mistake that I made was towards the end of the video and it was down here and it was essentially hooking up this mask into the transform. And I just kind of got unlucky and I sort of picked this bottom one here. When I click on this transform and I move this transform around, it kind of works within this little region here. But the only reason that it works is because it happened to be at the very bottom of this merge chain and everything else kind of falls apart. So if I use the same technique on any one of these here, things get pretty ugly. And the reason things don't really work is because I'm actually masking a transform. That's not really what I want to do. We want to use the technique that we've showed throughout this video. All right, so now I've just switched over to my updated node structure. And if you notice this chunk here, well, this is what we just built throughout this tutorial. So we have this merge control here. We have a mask feeding into that. And we have this transparent background feeding into that. So the way I've set it up here, so for, we're, we're looking at this clip top left. So that's this one up here, for example. So the way I've set it up here is we can take the center control and we, so we're looking at this top left here. So the center control kind of moves, you know, just the clip within this top left here. And I can do some, some sizes and all that type of stuff. I can also add in a transform node like we did in the tutorial earlier right here. If I want to keep my transforms in a more logical place, which would be the transform node itself. So that's really it as far as a fix is concerned. Again, my thanks to Captive Lucille. So that's all I have for today. So I will talk to you guys all later. Take care.